Okay, welcome to this episode of Love Summon, and we are here at Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, after our ferry trip. And when doing our research, we found out that supposedly the, the world's best French fries were here. Is right here in Rehoboth. You gotta check it out, right? So let's go ahead. It's called Thrashers, and we got a small. And Sydney's gonna be the first one to see if these are really the truly greatest French fries on the globe. And what's unique about these is you don't serve them with ketchup. They put them with malt vinegar. Yeah, so let's check it out. So you have a choice of them giving you one of these. That's apple cider vinegar, right? Yeah, it's apple cider vinegar. It's not technically malt vinegar. And they're fresh cut fries. Yes. And you just pour it on there. As much as you like. And we'll see how they taste. They look fabulous. Mmm. These are really great. And what makes them so great? Well, they're fresh cut, perfectly fried, perfectly salted, and they taste great with the vinegar. All right. So well, there's Thrasher's good. back there. They have a, three different locations, so you need to check and see which one's open. And you can see we are right about on the beach. All right, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give these a try. And you can see at the top of the sign there, it's a little warm today. All right, see, what happens when you're a Thrasher's newbie? Right, you end up putting up too much vinegar and we get French fry soup. So oh well. It still tastes good. We're not, we get green license, we're from Vermont. We don't know what we're doing. True. All right, see, so what's your opinion of uh, Rehoboth Beach boardwalk so far? Very nice, it reminds me a little bit of Myrtle Beach. Yeah, Atlantic City, I think, was a different, a a different vibe. vibe. This is kind of like a tourist town, and it's got that same vibe as Myrtle Beach does. Mm -hmm. Whereby Atlantic City was more of a gambling kind right. of a, a gambling. casino destination. Yes, exactly. Or a destination Maybe for Las locals. Maybe Las Vegas style-ish. Yeah. Maybe. But, but we're we're here. Definitely. Uh, and, and the challenge here was finding parking. Yes. Um, it's it's a Wednesday. We didn't think there would be, but right. We. Eventually did. We eventually did, but the farther you get from the main street is the better place for parking. So. All right, let's go ahead and check things out. Yep. The great yellow sun is reflecting in your deep blue eyes. The day has begun. You spin around, you spin around, you laugh to yourself. Of course, when you're on the boardwalk, you have to do the classic fortune telling from Zoltar. Cheer up, my friend, and listen to the proverb from Zoltar. A smile is worth a hundred frowns in any market. Ah, yes, and lucky for you, the great Zoltar sees much happiness ahead for you. Get rid of all your sorrow. So the theme of the fortune was be prepared. I think they were directing it to the wrong audience because I think we are some of the most prepared people as you will see later on in the video. Yeah, we're at Dogfish Head Brewing in Delaware. And um, yeah, so Cindy got the Pilsner, which is kind of what I wanted. But there is seldom an epic fail for me in a brewery. This is it. And, and so I saw on the menu it said Golden Ale. Did I'm you like, not read the fine print? Classic example of not reading the fine print. And this is a Golden Ale brewed with chocolates and strawberries. And if Cindy knows me, she knows the one flavor combination I loathe amongst all else in the world is chocolate and fruit. Is chocolate and fruit, whether it's chocolate and orange or chocolate and cherry or whatever. Separate, they're great. And you put it in a beer. That's even worse, right? This this may be. Uh, we're gonna see on this one. Epic fail. No, I can't, I can't do that. So what's your 
which which is worse, the Beetlejuice beer that you got that was banana flavored, or this? I, I, can't, I can't. I drank the, bit, the banana beer. <laughs> You want to return it and just split mine? Yep, I think I'm going to bring that one in. Alright. Okay, I'm back with a 60 minute IPA. I tried. I tried my best, but chocolate and cherries, you can't do it. Oh well. Cheers. Better? Yep. So how's your beer, see? My beer is fantastic. Nice, refreshing beer on a hot day. Yeah, so this is one of the downsides of staying in a state park, is we have absolutely zero internet. So for me to answer comments from you guys, I've uh, got to come to a brewery. And that's the real reason we're here at the brewery. It's not to drink the beer or anything like oh, that. Oh, no, not, the, not at it's, all. Um, it's certainly just to get internet business done. And um, so hopefully you enjoyed it when I answer your comments. And if the comments are misspelled or a little bit weird, <laughs> It's too much beer. That's probably the reason why. I know, they were also a distillery. So what did you end up getting? We got some lemon and peppercorn vodka. And I think that's gonna make a great vodka sauce for our spaghetti tonight. All right, well, we'll have to uh, assess that and see how it tastes. We're here at Trap Pond State Park and it's certainly more uh, rural than the uh, places we've come from. I mean, it was pretty much nuts in New Jersey. And when we went to Rehoboth Beach, that was just crazy. So what state are we in? We're in Delaware. So we chalked off another state to our list and let's go ahead and take a quick look at this campground. You know, the, the surface here is basically, they have these beautiful pine trees that Cindy's gonna pan around to. And so a lot of the... Uh... Some of these pine trees are really, really tall. I love it. They have canopies that are probably a hundred feet. Maybe not 100 feet. More like 30 feet. Yeah, but still, they're pretty tall. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the surface here is basically a lot of... Uh, pine needles. Pine needles and sand. 30 amp electric. Just 30 amp? No 50 amp? Um, let's see. 50 amp too. Good call. So both 30 and 50 amp. Here's a tip for you. Whenever you're hooking up your water, make sure you always have that Y connector on, even if you're not using it. And that way, when you turn the water off, you can turn this one to relieve the pressure and it makes unscrewing everything a heck of a lot easier. So we always keep a Y connector on with our pressure reducer. It also makes watering my plants easier too. Yeah, if you need something like that. So we've got our auto former hooked up. We're not boosting. Which is good. And it's pretty hot here. Yeah, it's been in the mid 90s. Yes. So uh, we've been running the air conditioner. When you can see that some, whenever you run your air conditioner, you always want to check, to make sure you've got a really nice drip going of the condensate, which yep. we do. And we're running our air conditioning on low and we're turning it off every now and then because it gets a little too chilly in the Airstream. Right, and nice wide sights. Nice wide sights. Picnic table, somebody put it right next to the fire pit, but we haven't had a fire pit this trip. Yeah. But if we were to have a fire, we'd have to move the picnic table. But um, yeah, pretty much just a very rural, very quiet. So it's about um, nine miles to anything. Yeah. But what I liked about it too is that the campground host, when we pulled in, he knew what he was doing. And so he, he told us this is the way some people would go in. But he's like, no, go past your loop, take the road, and that way you can have a driver's side back in, which is always easier. It's always easier to driver's side back in. Right, especially when you have this big tree right there. Right. That and you Cindy have to navigate. Able to keep an eye on it. But that just goes to show they know what they were talking about, and that's always appreciated. Sometimes you don't, they don't, right. so you have to just do it yourself. All right, there you have it. Yep. So as you can see from these screenshots, we are under a severe thunderstorm warning, and it looks like the winds could be up to 70 miles an hour. Um, constant lightning and they even said nickel size hail which possibly yeah is the worst thing when you live in aluminum yeah i don't know but if you look at the tree canopy cover i don't think it, the the wind is more of a factor than the hail yeah, would be po go ahead and point up top there if you look at the canopy cover that's a double-edged sword a it may protect a little bit from the hailstones but b we've got a lot of branches up there but the trees as cindy said in our campground review or as i did are pretty stout, so we're not too worried about it. Right. So let's talk about storm preparation, what we've done. First of all, 
as per our checklist, we always know what county we're in. So we're in Sussex County because oftentimes storm warnings are issued according to Sussex counties. Or they're issued according to county. Right. So we know what our county is. We also have a plan should um, a tornado warning go into effect. Now, Cindy and I have said for thunderstorm watches, thunderstorm warnings, and tornado watches, we're not going to seek shelter. But for a tornado warning, or if we hear the sirens, we've located right where the bathhouse is, and we know we would beeline right to the bathhouse. All right, let's take some other precautions. First and foremost, the awning has come up, and the awning has come up before the storm has hit. There's nothing worse. Than trying to pull an awning in when winds come up, right? I've helped people do it. Not my own, because ours is already up. But Because uh, um, you never know about microbursts. It's a miserable thing. Also, everything, no chairs, no mats, no nothing. Nothing the, that can blow into the airstream. The few things that we do have, the charcoal grill, which I'm hoping to use tonight, and Cindy's plant is underneath to keep it from being beat upon by the rain. So... I've unlocked my Hughes auto former and because that allows for a more secure connection of the cover. The Hughes auto former, interestingly, I'm going to ask them this at some point. Why is it not weatherproof? It's weather resistant, but not weatherproof. So it sits on a block. It's got its little rain cover on. Will that and rain cover stay on if it gets windy? Yes, it will because it's Velcroed between the two uh, electrical cords. Good question. Um, the thing is is just to make sure that everything is secured. And if you don't have a surge protector, this is exactly the time you should have a surge protector, is during an extreme lightning storm in which a, a hit to the electrical grid could cause a surge, which could blow up your rig. The other thing that we've got going is just in case cell towers are taken out and we lose everything else. Our little walkie talkies that we use to back up the rig also serves as an emergency weather radio. So we've got that going for us, so that it should uh, power go out and the cell phone towers are taken down, we can still understand the weather situation. So that's about it. Other than that, we're hunkered down. We're gonna wait for this storm, see what happens. And needless to say, fantastic fans are also Absolutely. brought down. Absolutely. The radio aerial's down. Well, we never put it up anyway. We don't have a TV. But the fantastic fans have come down. Everything is down, everything's secured. And I think we're just gonna and you lock, watch it. And come you in. lock the awning down. The awning is yeah. Normally I probably wouldn't lock the awning down and secure it, but because we're leaving tomorrow anyway, I figure I'm gonna have to do it anyway. So, so why not just uh, give it a good lock? So we've done that. And actually, if you're wondering about lightning in an RV, it's actually a Faraday cage. So it's just like being in your car. You know, they say it's safer to stay in your car, um, and so. Certainly, as soon as the lightning starts to hit, we're going to be inside the RV, as that's the safest place to be. All right, we'll see how it goes. Maybe get some pictures from the inside. Oh, I almost forgot one more thing. The other thing we're going to make sure we do is have a sufficient supply of beer inside. Should we be <laughs> hunkered down for an extended duration? Um, and I can hear the first little rumbly of thunder coming in. So yep. this will be a good one. So how far away was it? It was about nine seconds. Last time it was 10, so it's getting closer. So I'm counting the lightning as it comes in to track the storm. So we're nine miles out. So what are you noticing, C? Look how dark it's getting over there. You can see all the people with their lights on and it's starting to sprinkle just a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna be heading in here pretty soon. Yep. I would not wanna be coming in at this moment, but hopefully, here it, here it comes. Let's go inside. So I know it's dark, but literally, as I'm filming outside, talking about hunkering down and taking in the awning and the massive storm that's about to hit, as I'm saying that, this guy puts his awning down. His awning has been down in three days, and as I'm talking about storm prep, he puts it down so that he can grill. I might wait for dinner a little bit later. I mean, come on, people, seriously? All right, well, there was Delaware. You can see we're docked and chocked here at um, Martinac State Park in Maryland. In Maryland, and we were lucky enough to get an upgrade because we had planned on a boondocking site. Yeah, four days of boondocking in July. That sounded like a good idea at the time, but 
Well, yeah. the weather's been more mild yeah. than it has been, so it, it would have been okay. But they have some first come, first serve sites reserved just for travelers, and who knew, right? Right. So. There's no shame if you love boondocking. If they walk up and say, would you just rather have electric when you were planting? Yep, we'll take it. Yep. Especially in July. I think Monday's going to get hot again, so we'll appreciate the, uh, the but, hookups. But until then, we have the fantastic fans going, and we're enjoying nature. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if there's a place in Delaware that you like to go and you want to share with us. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.